Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you he here. Uh, thank you for attending this presentation. My name is Oleg Gelbuch. I'm working f uh, in uh, Mirantis Labs. This is a small team uh, dedicated to innovation and development of uh, prototypes of uh, solutions that will eventually become a part of Mirantis product line. Today, I would like to, talk, to tell you about uh, Pump House. Uh, this is a solution that we have been working on for la last uh, like few months. And uh, this solution in, uh, is aimed to solve a problem of uh, rolling upgrade of OpenStack clouds. Uh, first, let me explain why we tackle this problem, if it needs explanation. Uh, why we wanted to address the upgrade problem. Uh, now, OpenStack deployments, uh, Marantis is working with OpenStack deployments, and OpenStack deployments are everywhere. Uh, we see different uh, types of deployments, different releases of OpenStack in, uh, installed by our customers. And uh, we also uh, deploy with our uh, tools, so, uh, but eventually every customer wants the latest release of OpenStack with new features, with new uh, drivers, and so on. So, uh, usually uh, all customers has their applications running in their clouds, and uh, they want to, to keep those applications running in new versions of OpenStack uh, naturally. So another uh, important uh, thing that all customers want is to minimize the hardware requirements and uh, to reuse servers, uh, physical servers they used in previous installations. So. From here, we took the goals and requirements for our prototype product. The first requirement that, I, uh, that uh, we wanted to satisfy is the minimal new hardware. The second is the minimal impact on the end-user applications. It means that uh, applications should work after upgrade just like they worked before, and the downtime when applications are not accessible due to upgrade is a minimum. And uh, we want to upgrade step by step because we need to verify on each step that everything is OK. And if, uh, for some reason, a new version of OpenStack is not working well, we need to be able to roll back the upgrade, to stop the upgrade, to pause it. And of course, we want this process automated because uh, there are really uh, brilliant uh, operators' teams uh, out there. The, uh, they have a solid track record of upgrading their custom OpenStack environments. But uh, what we wanted to do is to productize the upgrade process. And uh, this requires automation on every step and the unification of the approach. So we developed a rather simple forklift strategy for the upgrade. Uh, first of all, we need uh, several hosts. It depends on the architect desirable architecture for the tar upgrade target cloud. Uh, but it should include at least one controller server, physical server for controller, and at least one physical server for compute node. This is the initial like, seed of the upgrade target cloud. Uh, next, when we have the, those servers, we deploy the upgrade target cloud of an, with a new OpenStack release. We start to move workloads. Uh, I will tell uh, a little bit later about what workload is in uh, our understanding. So uh, move it one by one to target cloud. And when we release some capacity in the uh, source cloud, we can take it and upgrade it and reassign it to the upgrade target cloud. And of course, as I said before, at every step we want 
to be able to verify the migration, the upgrade, and that they work together. So, uh, next couple of slides is uh, dedicated to uh, description of upgrade flow. For example, upgrade flow. This is the first step. We use Pump House application, which talks to uh, Compute API of the source cloud on the left side to use live migrate to live migrate servers virtual servers from selected physical hosts and disable those hosts, put them in maintenance mode. I will tell uh, about maintenance mode in a couple of minutes. And the next step is to deploy target cloud. Uh, this, uh, we use fuel for deployment of the target environment. Uh, because this is a uh, fully automated open source uh, deployment solution with uh, uh, API that satisfies our needs. Next step is to start migration of workloads, start releasing the host in the source cloud. We use uh, OpenStack APIs to select uh, resources that, uh, that are included in the workload to create those, recreate those resources, uh, uh, replicate those resources in the destination cloud, in the upgrade target cloud, and basically this process is repeated until the capacity of uh, target environment reaches the uh, set threshold. Next, we need to add the capacity to the target environment, so we repeat, basically repeat the first step. We use uh, live migration to move servers, remaining servers, from one of the compute nodes in the source environment, decommission it from the source environment, add it to the destination environment, and repeat this process until all compute nodes from the source are upgraded and added to the target environment. So this is a so-called forklift upgrade. And uh, let me explain why this approach was chosen, because uh, uh, the eventual goal of OpenStack upgrades, when, when you talk about um, upgrades of OpenStack, is the in-place upgrade. So you don't do this forklift of, work, of uh, resources, don't uh, basically install new controllers and so on. But is it even possible? So what Pump House do is combine workload mobility orchestration with the environmental and configuration management. Those two functions are uh, rather contradictory because uh, to provide workload mobility and orchestration, you need to be architecture independent. If we want to productize this, productize the upgrade process, if we want it to be repeatable, to be reproducible, to be like to work on wide range of configurations that OpenStack supports, we need to have this process as architecture dependent as possible. Uh, the second uh, feature of this first function is that workloads are moved in units. So uh, you need to uh, move workload as a whole. You can't move part of resources from workload and uh, leave other resources behind. Because you have two different clouds, they, are sh they share nothing, and you can't in, in, uh, in, the most, uh, in the most general case, you can't uh, uh, be sure that uh, components of workload, resources of workload, can access each other and the applications run uh, properly. On the other hand, the bare metal and configuration management is focused on architecture because you need to, uh, you need to uh, exactly define what you want to deploy, what you want to upgrade to, actually. 
So, uh, and the second feature of the environmental configuration management is that it needs to be staged. You need to be able to stop at some point and just work with the remaining nodes. So I, I've been talking about workloads a lot and a uh, couple of words about what, 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 what are workloads in Pump House. So uh, this is pretty simple because um, what we are working with in OpenStack is user applications. User applications work on top of some resources in OpenStack. So the combination of all resources used by certain applications that produce like uh, some service, some result, is a workload. For example, in our prototype version of Pump House, we support the most simple, the most basic type of workload. It's a virtual server with all meta resources that it depends on and all applications that run in that server. So uh, you can see that uh, server workload depends on, uh, is composed of virtual server instance that depends on several types of resources provided by different OpenStack services. We can select multiple servers by grouping them by, for example, tenant ID. So our approach to the migration of workloads is uh, rebuilt in shared nothing cloud. So target environment, target cloud, and source environment, source cloud, they absolutely independent. They don't have uh, like common keystone back, uh, backend, for example. They don't have it in, in our assumption. And uh, to rebuild the server from source cloud in the destination, in the target environment, uh, we can take two options. One of, two, one of those two options. First is to move image and just rebuild from the image. The second is to create a snapshot during the migration process and instantiate server in the target environment from that snapshot. In the future, we plan to address uh, other uh, types of migration, other paths of migration. Uh, first, uh, our target is the gross cloud block migration. Uh, this assumes that uh, hypervisors, uh, hypervisors in the source and destination somehow can like, uh, exchange the uh, network traffic, they, they can copy uh, data directly from hypervisor to hypervisor. And OpenStack, uh, we need to extend OpenStack to provide the ability to adapt migrated instances. Uh, and the ultimate goal of uh, the upgrade is a live migration upgrade because we uh, Eventually, we want to be able to seamlessly uh, move uh, resources from one cloud to another. And uh, this is basically provided by live migration. That requires uh, elaborate uh, management of shared storage between clouds because we need to uh, have the same storage layer in source and destination cloud. So this is a simple scheme of uh, image-based rebuild. Uh, obviously, it uh, doesn't allow to retain data uh, stored in the ephemeral storage of a uh, virtual, virtual server. Uh, it's used for such use cases as stateless applications running inside uh, servers or for infrastructure virtual servers like uh, routers or uh, load balancers with uh, external source of, of configuration. Uh, snapshot build based rebuild is uh, a little bit more elaborated. 
uh, two steps are added to the main flow and uh, this increases the downtime for the server because you, it, it takes the time to make a snapshot, to transfer a snapshot from one, uh, from source cloud to, to destination. This, uh, this option suits for uh, basically any type of application that stores data in the uh, ephemeral storage of the, of the instance. So as I said, uh, we use OpenStack APIs for the migration of data, and let me explain why. Uh, as I said, we need unified way to migrate resources. We need it to work on basically any architecture supported by OpenStack. Uh, there are more effective, more performant ways to uh, basically migrate the data. You can override, override the disk file, for example, directly from one hypervisor to another hypervisor. And if you use KVM with QCO2 and run on uh, Linux. But what if you use, for example, Ceph? You can't do this as simple as that. You can't do, just copy over the disk image. So OpenStack APIs abstract the backends as much as possible. And th this is our goal. Uh, so working on the resources orchestration, we faced a challenge. The main challenge of this uh, migration is that uh, servers have dependencies. And those dependencies, in turn, have their own dependencies. So this is the uh, like, uh, simple tree for migration of single server. We need to do all those operations to retrieve data, to store data, to translate uh, cloud-specific parameters. Uh, so uh, parameters from, uh, for resources in, from source cloud match the parameters they, for their dependencies in destination cloud. So this is an example. And we tried to solve this using Taskflow library uh, thanks to uh, Joshua Harlow and the team who worked on this because they really created great tool that allowed us to basically simply uh, build those uh, dependency trees. Uh, what you have seen on the previous slide is actually the dump of flows created using Taskflow library. So that's, that's very useful tool for us. Uh, Taskflow also allowed us to solve the parallel execution of tasks that don't, don't depend on each other. For example, migration of several servers that, they, that don't basically depend on each other can be done in parallel. Use it built-in Taskflow mechanisms. And uh, another important thing that uh, Taskflow provided us is that the migration algorithm is deterministic, so we can know in advance before we started migration that at some point we will run out of capacity in the target environment. And we can in advance schedule the migration of physical host from source to destination to increase its capacity to, to, to provide additional capacity for the resources. Now to bare metal management. Uh, our approach was pretty simple at, uh, at, at, for the prototype. We used uh, remote power management for the commission in source cloud. We used uh, automated deployment framework. We took fuel f as uh, the most available and most effective from our standpoint, our point of view uh, framework out there. 
and uh, we wanted one by one upgrade of nodes controlled from user interface, being it a script or a graphic user interface. Because sometimes, for example, you need to rewire network before you can reassign nodes from source to destination. This, is, this can be basically automated. It depends on your network configuration. So in a source environment, uh, we need to prepare a node for decommissioning. And this process uh, basically has uh, three distinct steps. First of all, we need to move all virtual servers that not yet migrated to the destination cloud. We need to move them inside the source cloud because, uh, as I said before, we select servers, virtual servers for migration based on our workload definition. And it can exclude some servers running on the specific host. So we need to preserve them. We need to leave migrate them to other hosts in the source environment. Next, we set boot parameters for the uh, node in source environment because uh, fuel basically requires that uh, node boots from the network, and then it can provide upgrade. And last step is uh, to remove the node from the environment. Uh, we do this by uh, simple OpenStack call, service delete. We just remove it from the list of ser services recognized by OpenStack. And uh, we wanted the decommission management to be uh, pluggable so we can support source environments based on fuel and based on other deployment frameworks other uh, deployed by other uh, solutions. So for the fuel, we have fuel API, and it's pretty simple. Just one call to, to HTTP, and this, the, the, that's all. For the uh, all other types, basically, of deployments, it's uh, IPMI. We just issue a couple of commands and decommission the node by power set. In a destination environment, uh, Fuel provided us with automated upgrade. Uh, we use it for uh, to assign a role to the node in the Fuel environment. We uh, then call the automated deployment. And optionally, we can test the success of the deployment with Fuel provided tools. Fuel also provides the latest OpenStack release, the Mirantis OpenStack. And uh, what's uh, also important, that the Fuel is an open source framework. We can take, uh, we can implement some functions that are not supported currently by Fuel, that needed by us, and basically commit them back. For example, if, uh, when we need to create a target environment, we basically need a call that replicates the configuration of uh, source environment as close as possible. And uh, in future, it's possible that we will commit this change to fuel upstream. So uh, on the bare metal side, we had challenge uh, connected to maintenance mode for servers for OpenStack as, as a whole and for uh, workloads. So at the host level, at the level of physical node and source environment, uh, we implemented the maintenance mode as evacuation, followed by disabling the node servers in the host. From this moment on, the host can be uh, manipulated, can be uh, decommissioned without affecting other uh, resources in the source cloud. Uh, on a level of unit of migration, the maintenance mode uh, in a prototype version is simple because uh, our 
unit of migration is a server, virtual server, and we just suspend it before we start migration, so we ensure that uh, its state uh, doesn't change before we move it to the destination. And uh, our next step, our fu uh, future plan, is to implement the maintenance mode on the level of Nova project. Okay, so uh, here is a small recording that shows how basically Pump House UI looks like. Uh, and uh, as this is a prototype, the UI is pretty simple. It doesn't have f really uh, many functions, uh, many uh, like knobs and, le and levers, but uh, you can see that. It includes two, two, two environments, source and destination environment. For each environment, it uh, presents a list of tenants or projects that uh, basically group servers and uh, a list of hosts that are included in the environment. You can see that uh, below those two panes is the log pane, which uh, uh, basically tells you what is going on in your uh, uh, environments, how the uh, upgrade is going. So, let me skip it a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry, for some reason it's... No, it's okay. So you can see that... Uh, we can select a tenant, we can uh, see servers that are included in the tenant, and we can see resources that uh, are basically assigned to the server and source environment. And uh, those resources that we display include image and floating IP because uh, those are basically the most important uh, things that we can control. Uh, you have seen that uh, in addition to those uh, resources, there are much more dependencies for each server that we need also need to migrate before we can respawn the server in the destination environment. So when the environment is uh, ready for migration, we basically can click uh, a migration button to the right of the tenant name. And see that the migration has started. The tenant, the tenant appears in the destination environment. All servers are put to the migrated state. Some of them put in the suspended state. Migration of those servers starts. And you see that, uh, thanks to task flow, this happens in parallel. So all they get suspended at the same time, and they appear in batches in the destination environment. Uh, so, a couple of words about the uh, underlying technologies that we used here. We uh, implemented uh, two types of the, ser of the uh, solution. First type is the uh, service mode, and uh, this is uh, API server that uh, allows to create Flows using migration flows using task flow library and task, uh, task flow tasks call OpenStack clients to perform actions on the 
source and destination environments. Uh, another option uh, to, to use with Pump House is the CLI mode. This uh, is a simple script that directly calls task flow flows, and uh, you can specify IDs for tenant from which the servers will be selected for migration. Uh, some overview of our next steps. Uh, we, uh, as this is a prototype, we didn't yet release the uh, first version of it. Uh, we will release once we have support for Cinder volumes. And uh, our next steps are to support uh, more elaborate resources like heat stacks, uh, for example, and silometer metrics later. We plan to implement the upgrade scheduler that uh, automates the migration of resources in conjunction with the migration of physical nodes, as I described before. And we plan to implement some advanced workload types. Uh, first of all, project workload is uh, the workloads that consist not only of servers and their dependent resources, but includes all meta resources that belongs to the certain project. And uh, another type of workload that we aim to implement is a stack workload. Uh, this is a set of resources defined by, stack, uh, by heat stack. And uh, basically, last but not the least, is integration with fuel deployment automation for the integration we want to be able to uh, basically uh, provide upgrades to fuel, upgrades functionality to fuel. Uh, you can find uh, source code and documentation on GitHub. This project is developed and open. And uh, we have API documented on the API service. This is useful for documenting APIs. And uh, I started a series of blog posts in Mirantis blog uh, dedicated to the pump house. Uh, there is a, an initial post with introduction. And uh, shortly, there will appear deep dive posts with description of the internals of the service. Thank you for your attention. We have like five minutes for questions, if you have one. I'm um, sorry. For the other types? Yes, right. Uh, the timeline is as follows. We prepare the MVP for upgrading uh, with only ser servers and volume supported, with only compute nodes upgraded uh, by the release 6.1 of Fuel. It will be uh, the end of the year, probably. And uh, we hope to support more elaborate scenarios I mentioned. For example, the cross-cloud uh, uh, cross storage uh, by the next design summit. That's preliminary timeline again. Uh, thank you. I didn't quite catch, I didn't quite catch um, how, when you start the migration, how our VMs actually move between the clouds if there's no Shared storage. How are you actually doing it right now? Sorry. H how are you moving? <laughs> Hello. How are you, how are VMs migrating between clouds right now? If there are if there's no shared storage. So once the migration starts, mm -hmm. once the VM is being moved, how is it actually moved and there's no live migration between two clouds? Um. Is it it's shut down, written to file, and then the file is migrated across and then re-imported or re. 
hydrated, if you like, on the far side. Is that correct? Something like that? I'm, af I'm afraid I, uh, I, I still can't hear the... <laughs> I catch you after. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's some... All right, then, if no more questions, then uh, thank you uh, for your time and for your interest. Uh, I hope to uh, see some uh, early feedback on the pump house if you have tried it. And uh, thank you. Have a nice day.